Welcome to the Freedom School, where democracy and freedom reign supreme, okay? So, at the Democratic and Innovative Freedom School, just uh, the Freedom School for short, uh, is that, you getting me here? Okay, so, uh, the Democratic and Innovative Freedom School is an innovative school that I had designed in order uh, for the JCPS competition, um, but it's a good idea just in general, frankly, okay? So, the, uh, the governing principles of the Freedom School, just two principles, freedom and democracy. That's it, okay? So, the Freedom School, this is where freedom and democracy reign supreme. Always think great thoughts. This comes from a quote of Benjamin Disraeli. He says, nurture your mind with great thoughts for you will never go higher than what you think. So, that's, that's a great um, fucking idea, you know? If you only say, well, I'm going to only apply for a McDonald's job and never think of yourself having more um, value or skill, then that's all you're going to get. But as soon as you start thinking, well, maybe I want to be management, maybe I want to do something else, maybe go to school, maybe go to military, maybe start my own business, then, you know, that's when you'll actually achieve it. Um, the, it's not guaranteed that you'll achieve it when you dream big, uh, but if you don't dream big, you'll never, you can never go higher. That's just so true. You can never go higher than what you think. So if you only say that you're going to go a certain level, um, you know, I don't know. Basically, it makes me think like you aim for the moon, so at least you can land on the clouds, right? You you aim for something like really high, and you make it a goal, not something that's completely impossible. But that way, even if you're not, you know, don't make it to the very tippy top, uh, you're still, you know, farther along than everyone else. Regardless, the Freedom School, the name of it comes from the Civil Rights era. So um, back in the Civil Rights era, you had informal gatherings informal gatherings where which mostly consisted of voter registration um, but they were offering freedom schools for the black folks to actually get a real education uh, they had segregated schools and a lot of times the funding uh, wasn't there for the black schools and um, and so during the civil rights era they started uh, freedom schools all throughout the south and it eventually just turned into voter registration uh, which is important you know that's actually you know, uh, taking democracy, American democracy, into our classrooms, which isn't a bad idea. I remember having voter registration cards handed to me, um, you know, when I was in in school. So, you know, that's uh, to to. I don't think it's a bad thing to cross, you know, uh, uh, political activism with with school. So, freedom school. There's only two. It's freedom and democracy. Those are the only two governing principles which Freedom School is going to, um, um, you know, those are the two guiding principles that's the ones that they hold, that, that we're going to hold on to the most. And um, even though, let's see, so those are the guiding principles and what I want to do is go from the general to the specific. So just freedom and democracy and we'll see how that goes, okay? So here's the ideas that I come up with. Or I'm going to go for the general for, uh, to the specific. So I'm going to talk about the general ideas and this might take two videos. I uh, do tend to be way too wordy, um, but regardless, I'm going to keep it moving. So you had Cicero who had said that freedom is participation in power. Okay, well, that's democracy. You want to get the, uh, the children to be strong? Well, you need to get them to learn how to participate in democracies. So if they're not participating in the power structures, then they don't have freedom. You know, if you say, well, I make all the important decisions and you get nothing, well, you know, you're basically saying what you think they're capable of doing. So uh, Cicero, freedom is participation in power. So the general to the specific. Okay. So why do we need the, why do we need a school in America called the Freedom School? Well, it's pretty simple. Okay. You know we have these authoritarian, autocratic, totalitarian, racial, um, you know, t dictatorships in the schools, and they're you know autocratic. That's what the Russian czars ever threw because there's an autocrat only one rule. How dare only one rule over everybody? The totalitarian is where they actually influence your mind. They actually get in your head. Fascism is you do as I say or else violence will happen. Um, and so these are the schools that we're in right now. Now we're in Kentucky, okay? Now Kentucky has, well, you know, a lot of people know a lot about Kentucky. So we're going to talk, talk about some of the statistics. But it's the home of Charlie Manson. And when Charlie Manson was a kid in the hills of eastern Kentucky, he had this Uncle Jesse who came to him and he says, we're rebels, boys, and we'll never go to them Yankee schools, right? So you have this sort of culture of ignorance, this racist culture of ignorance type of um, just dumbassery, right? Just a bunch of dumbassery going on in Kentucky. And it's sort of saying, well, we don't want you to get educated in their ways because we want you to brainwash you with our stupidity. 
And, you know, it also kind of says, um, it, when Uncle Jesse says, we're rebels, boy, we're going to go to New Yankee schools, that's when Charlie Manson grabs a bomb, goes to school, blows it up. Right? And then later on, the authorities come and blow up his Uncle Jesse and his moonshine still, and then uh, uh, Charlie Manson gets raped a bunch of times, goes out of California, starts a cult, gets him to kill some people, is in prison for 70 some years. Well, that's, that's Kentuckian, okay? That's Charlie Manson. And um, so the general to the specific, even still today, Kentucky is basically we're third world country standards, okay? We, two out of five adults in Kentucky are illiterate. Two out of five Kentuckians either have a kindergarten or lower um, reading level, okay? So they can't even fucking read. When it comes to the education system, you teach kids how to read when they're in kindergarten, and then um, once you teach them how to read, by the time they're in first grade, they can read to learn. So you teach them to read, and then once they learn to read, they can read to learn. You know, they can pick up a book and, and study themselves, and self-education is the most powerful form of education. Um, ask Isaac Asimov, or Abraham Lincoln, or uh, Steve Jobs, or a million people, Frederick Douglass, you know, just a, a million people who have succeeded well, educated themselves. So, from the general to the specific, Kentucky has a lot of uh, educational problems, right? So, lots of problems here in Kentucky, and um, two out of five Kentucky adults can't read, okay? So, you, they can't even read. Recently, you had our children who come out on some national um, rankings, who's, uh, they're in the 10th place, okay? So, so, let's see, when you have the children who are like some of the smartest kids that we've got combined with the adults who 40% of them can't even read, you know, you're, we're going to have to start listening to the children. They are smarter, they're more involved, and they're doing all the things that their teachers are telling them to do. They are raising up to our expectations, but are the teachers raising their expectations for the students? If the students, you know, have we taught the students, right, they're 10th in the nation, and so they was able to stuff all this information into their brains, but can they have critical thinking? Do they have critical thinking skills? Do they have independence? Do they have a moral core? Do they care about people? I doubt it, because that's not what our American education system teaches us. So two out of five adults in Kentucky cannot read, okay? So this is some data-rich, evidence-driven material. That's 40%, third world country standards. Haiti has an even higher literacy rate than Kentucky. Haiti, the poorest country in the entire Western world. They know how to speak three languages. Creole, French, and English. So the poorest country in the entire world can through, speak, uh, speak three different languages, whereas Kentucky hillbillies can barely even speak English, right? Some sort of hillbilly speaking these or some shit. So literacy is important so we can learn how to fail, or not learn how to fail. Literacy is important so we can learn how to, or read to learn, so we can read and teach ourselves. And also just, you know, to understand news, what's going on, read manuals. And um, so there's a, since 40% of Kentucky adults don't know how to read, right, how, you know, they're going to sit there and say, do this and do that. Or maybe they don't. Maybe they just go about their day and just do as they're told. Um, but 40% of them, you can't even read. So how can you tell me what you think about this or about that, you know, like um, uh, Charlie Manson's father. Charlie Manson's father, or his uncle Jesse. Does uncle Jesse know how to read? You know, is that why he's against him going to a government school? Because if Charlie Manson learns how to read, then he'll start looking at his uncle like he's a dumb shit that he is. Because he's an ignorant ass, fucking backwards redneck. Racist, redneck piece of shit. Uh, yes, there's a culture of ignorance in Kentucky, and it's very strong, very potent. Okay, so the general to the specific. We got smart kids here in Kentucky. We got smart kids. They're geniuses. Uh, the younger generation are more evolved anyways. They've been on the internet and the technology they've been using the entire time, whereas some of the adults are rusty when it comes to that. Some I still even know is like, oh, I don't even do that internet stuff. I don't even do that computer shit. Okay, well, you know, you're completely off the fucking, you know, out of modern society. That's like saying I don't have a telephone or I don't have a vehicle. You know, basically it's just like it's one of those uh, staples to a person's life, like a smartphone. If you got a smartphone, you're really missing out. So... Um, you know, Kentucky's children are the 10th smartest in the entire nation. We've been ranking on the bottom for ever since I can remember. We've had, like, so many perennial problems. Like, it's, it's just, it's, it's undaunting. But the fact that our children are 10th in the nation, we're the 10th, we got the 10th smartest children in the nation, okay? So, um, have we prepared them well? They're rising to our expectations, but are we rising to theirs? Do, do, have we taught them everything they needed to know? They learned all the stuff we taught them, you know, what we told them to learn. But do they actually know, like, life skills? Do they know how to um, socialize and interact with others? Do they know how to uh, assert themselves 
diplomatically? Do they know how to uh, uh, target somebody and try to get what they want? Do they know how to ask people for things and, um, and how to take a no, right? How to be cooperative with others. So there's a lot of things that our modern education system is completely missing. And you can tell that the, um, you know, the, the adults are completely fucking up. And they, when they're fucking up, it's not just the education and the literacy, right? Two out of five Kentuckians can't even read, so fuck those people. They don't know what the fuck they're doing. They can barely read a goddamn speed limit sign, let alone, you know, um, run for office and have some sort of vision that we all can grab onto. But we're... Kentucky is like one of the worst states when it comes to a whole shitload of statistics. We're the number one in America for the highest rate of cancer deaths. And that was 2006 and 2011. Number one nationally for toxic air pollution. Number one in America for colorectal cancer incidents. Number one for binge drinking. Number one in America. So this is Kentucky compared to every all 49 states, right? We're drinking more than everybody else. We're dying of all these different cancers more than anybody else. Number one for oil cavity and fair... Uh, uh, Farnick, Far, Farrix, Farnix, Far, I don't know, P H A R Y N X, cancer. So oral cavity, um, binge drinking, getting drunk all the time, colorectal, right, colon cancer. My, um, my uh, uh, grandmother died of colon cancer. My grandmother died of colon cancer. And my father died of, di or my grandfather died of diabetes, right? So, let's see, number one for the highest rate of lung cancer deaths, so lung cancer, oral cavity, it's the worst run state, so financially mismanaged, they got p pensions that are just, they don't know what the fuck to do with the pensions, they spend more money on prisons and schools when it costs $40,000 per year to house a prison inmate and $8,000 a year to educate a child for a year. What would you rather spend your money on? Would you rather spend $8,000? Um, to educate our young people so they ain't going to prison, or do I spill them forty thousand dollars just to you know you want to get pissed off about people on welfare and shit? You can't get no more people. You can't get no more communistic than prison, except for the lack of freedom, right? Um, but in terms of free stuff, free food, free place to stay, free cable, free um, this and that, forty thousand dollars. It's costing us a, a pretty penny. And we would for every one dollar we spend in education, this is just a general rule of thumb. We save two dollars. On the prison system, but eight thousand to four thousand. Actually, that's one dollar. We save four dollars when we spend one dollar in education. We save four dollars on prison. So, um, you know, that's one thing that Kentucky is going through. We're number one nationally for toxic air pollution. Number one in America uh, for binge drinking. Let's see, toxic air pollution, binge drinking, lung cancer, toothlessness. We got we're number one. We're number one in all these. Okay, we're the top state. For air pollution, we're the very top for cancer. We're the very top for lung cancer. We're the very top for having the worst run state: oral cancer, uh, colon cancer, all cancer, all cancer across the board. We're number one in right. Um, we're number one for toothlessness in 2004 for folks 65 and over. Number one in America for having the worst emotional well-being. Right, so we're not very emotionally stable. Um, number one in America, right, in everybody. Number one nationally for having the fastest growing prison industrial complexes. That's 2009 by the Pew Center Research. So that's, you know, of everybody. We've got more prisons than everybody. Growing as many as we can, right? We just have private prisons. Well, what are we going to do? We're going to build a hospital? We're going to build a school? Fuck it. Let's just build a prison. We, we ain't going to get our fucking citizens to go anywhere. We're just going to stick them in prison, enslave them, get them to clean up our roads. It's a new Jim, Jim Crow. Number one in America for maintaining the filthiest, dirtiest public spaces so we don't clean up our parks. Number one nationally, highest rate of child deaths from abuse and neglect so we beat the shit out of our kids till they die. Number one, war state for animal abuse, four years in a row. So not only are we beating kids, we're beating animals, probably beating everybody, right? Beating spouses, beating elderly, just beating everybody. Number one in America for having the worst drivers so we don't even know how to drive, right? Some non-driving ass motherfuckers. And let's see, number one, number two, nationally having the most cancer incidents in 2012. Number two in America for the worst overall being. Number two, nationally for kidney, renal pelvis cancer. Number three in the United States for America uh, for brain cancer, 2012. Number three, nationally for the most car wrecks. Number three, nationally for having the most folks below the poverty line, right? So we got more fucking poor people than, than everybody. Well, three, we're number three in that. So that means when it comes to um, economics, we are the very bottom, you know, of the heap. We're number 48, so there's only, what, two states that's beating us. And which two states would those be? Probably West Virginia, Mississippi. So that's, that's, these are the people, you know, these are like company. These are the people that are friends that we hang out with. And you can never fly high if you're just 
hanging out with a bunch of turkeys. You got to get with some eagles so you can fly high. And if, as long as we're being bunched in with West Virginia and Mississippi, we're not going to go anywhere. So Kentucky's a shithole. All these statistics are just to point out that the adults of Kentucky don't know what the fuck they're doing. And so the, um, the, the dream or hope of Kentucky lies in our young people, lies in these young geniuses, which are the 10th smartest in the entire country. More evolved, techn technologically astute, and, you know, Kentucky. So 